We're on the air. This is Radio Entrepreneurs 2017. And thanks again to all of our listeners and friends who connected with the show 2016. Hundreds of thousands of you uh, connected to the show at one point or another. And we're going to continue to work hard to produce a better quality and more stories that you'll want to listen to in 2017. Uh, my next guest, uh, one of, uh, I feel like this is Pee Wee's Playhouse, you know, and I'm Pee Wee. Uh, one of our regular guests that loves to stop by and we love to talk to. Very knowledgeable. I read about him in the Harvard Business Review all the time, isn't it? The Harvard yes, Business right. Review. Uh, Larry Steibel of Steibel Peabody. Larry, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, entrepreneurs, right? Yes, exactly. Great. Thank you. And welcome back. Thanks, Jeffrey. And Happy New Year. Thank you. So, topic today. Topic is um, entrepreneurs start their journey because they have a dream. What happens when the dream becomes a nightmare? What happens when things start becoming dark? How do you manage your team under conditions of what seems to be unending stress? So that's what we're going to talk about. Well, you know, that's something uh, you know I see a lot as well. My goal is to sort of help organizations sort of stop the cycle of stress. Right. I try not to create the cycle of stress. I only do that at home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, how do you, what do you see and how do you deal with it? Well, we, we deal with it in, 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 in several ways. I'm not going to talk about the individual. I'm going to be talking about the, pr the person as the leader. Okay. Um, the first thing to sort of understand is that no dream doesn't have bumps. There's going to be stress in every entrepreneur's journey. And sometimes the, it's just bumps in the roads, but sometimes it's really a big rut in the, in, in, in the hole. And you think you're in a hole and you're never gonna get out of the hole. Right. And how do you handle it? And how do you motivate your team? First thing you gotta remember, there's a lot of research to show that we know viruses are contagious, but so are emotions. If you are communicating stress, uncertainty, that you're not sure of yourself, it's going to be contagious with the rest of your team, and they're going to pick up on it. I heard this wonderful story on Book TV last, last weekend. They were interviewing someone who had done research on George C. Marshall, who's one of my heroes. General George C. Marshall. General George C. Marshall. The Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan, the architect of World War II. I mean, this absolutely. guy is just absolutely the incredible. The architect of the peace. But he right. he was the aide-de-camp to Black, uh, Black Jack Pershing, who was the commander-in-chief of the Allied Expeditionary Forces in World War I. And one day, he's had a really tough day, and he is in his in the back seat of a car being driven and he just looks exhausted, spent. terrible, spent, and it immediately goes around that Jack Pershing is depressed and he's given up all hope of, of winning. And from that experience, George C. Marshall learned that leadership is, a, is a performance art. You may feel depressed, upset, uh, hopeless. You just can't communicate it. If you're, you're dealing with unremitting, difficult stress, you're probably going to be laying people off to save money. Right. And you're going to be cutting resources. And, you, and, and then after you lay people off, the people that remain are probably going to have, you're going to ask them to do more work for the same or even less money. Right. So how do you, so how do, you do that? So, uh, and keep them motivated. And keep them motivated. So Joel Bruckner at Columbia University Business School has done some research about how, the mo motivation of employees after a layoff. And he looks at this as kind of an inverted U. So if you think of a U and then make turn it upside down. The two sides of the U, on one side is the typical thing that I see in my business career which is, oh my God, we've got, we've got some difficult times, we don't have a lot of money, so we're gonna lay people off, we're gonna give them as little severance as possible, we're gonna give them no outplacement or just a token outplacement and just get them out the door. Everybody understands we're going to, we need to save money. That's the worst thing you can do. Right, what because does it say to the people because staying? Exactly, For, you know, forget about the people that are leaving. It's, I mean, that's t difficult enough. The people that are saying are saying, you, oh. ju you just screwed the people that have been helping you and I'm left and you just told me what you're going to do to me 
right. if things don't improve. I better right. get my resume on the street. So that's the one end of the U. But the other end of the U is equally bad, which is, well, I know we've reached a pothole, but, you know, my, my, my father's incredibly rich, and he's going to support us all. So don't worry about it. you got a job for life. That's equally bad. Uh, once, if people feel that nothing's going to be done, I've, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly okay, they're, they're also going to be demotivated. The, the middle point is life's uncertain. Nobody's guaranteed a job forever. But if you tried your best, I'm going to take care of you as best I can. 